w a s d i k a Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So, if you've seen more than a few episodes of Hot Thai Kitchen, you're gonna notice that I use a mortar and pestle all the time. This is a tool that is used all around the world, but for Thai people, it is absolutely core to our kitchen. Every Thai kitchen has one. We use it for a gazillion things, and today I want to share with you what we use it for because I think once you realize how useful they are, you're going to want to join the club. And in addition to that, I'm also going to address all the FAQs about these, including how to choose the right one for you, how to properly use it, and how to take care of it. This video is sponsored by c r o k a handmade granite Thai mortar and pestle, and I'm going to use it for my demo today, and then I'll tell you more about them later in the video. Let's get started. First, what can you use a mortar and pestle for? Obviously, we use it to crush things, but let's get more specific. Here are all the things that I regularly use it for. Peeling and chopping garlic. I don't know about you, but it feels like 90% of everything that I cook involves garlic. So peeling and chopping garlic is the bane of my being. But it is much less painful in a mortar and pestle. To peel it, just give it a couple of good smash, and then the peel comes off super easily. I don't usually bother removing the bottom brown bit of the garlic if it's small and not hard. But if it is hard, you can just slice it off using the edge of the mortar as the cutting board. This is a trick that I learned from Thai street food vendors when they don't have space for a cutting board. Very handy. For rough chop, I can just pound it a few more times and leave it chunky, good for stir fries. But if you want it minced, then I just keep going until it's kind of a paste. And because this bruises the garlic rather than just cutting them, more cells are broken, and you actually release more garlic flavor into the dish. This is why. Pesto aficionados will insist that the mortar and pestle is the best way to make pesto. You're getting more bang for your buck. Next, chilies. When you chop chilies, you're going to end up with pieces of chilies, and the heat will be in those pieces and not integrated into the dish, and then you'll end up with chili landmines all over the place. Which, if that's what you want, that's fine. But if you want the spiciness to be evenly integrated into the dish, you want to pound your chilies into a paste. Now, this doesn't take long at all. And FYI, if you see pieces of chili skins left, don't worry about that. That is not where the spicy is. The goal is to disperse all the seeds, break down most of the pith and the flesh, and any thin skins is not going to cause a problem. Alternatively, you can also just gently crush a whole chili just until it's broken, and then let that infuse gently into soups so that you can easily remove the chili afterwards, and the heat will just be gently released into the liquid. Next is a big category of dressings, sauces, and marinades and curry paste. Let's just call them sauces for simplicity. Many sauces. Thai or otherwise, will require you to add garlic, chilies, ginger, all these tough aromatics that somehow need to be broken down and incorporated into the sauce. This is one of my favorite uses of mortar and pestle. Instead of chopping or grating them one by one, I can pound them all, all at once, and then again we're mashing and bruising the cells, releasing maximum flavor in a way that chopping just won't do. And then you can finish the whole thing in here. It acts like a mixing bowl. You can add your liquids, your seasonings, and then you don't need to add any more dishes to the mess. Next, you can grind fresh spices easily every time. We all know that when it comes to spices, the best flavor comes from grinding whole spices, not using pre-ground spices because those lose their flavors very quickly. But We all use ground spices, and I totally get this because it's such a hassle to like go find your spice grinder and like clear your clutter. You just can plug it in and then do a thing all for half a teaspoon of cumin, right? Like I totally get it. But if you keep your mortar and pestle on the counter, which I recommend you do, you can just reach for it, and this is how fast it will go. I will show it to you in real time. A teaspoon of cumin. And that's it. Nice and easy. This is very easy to clean. You can grind other spices in here if you'd like, and it's just way more convenient than dealing with one of these. 
Last couple of quick ones, chopping nuts. If you wanna add like a handful of chopped nuts over your salad, on pancakes, oatmeal, whatever it happens to be, you could chase them around with a knife on a cutting board, which I hate doing because it always feels like you're fine eventually chasing individual nut that didn't get hit. Or you can just give them a couple of quick pounds in a modern pestle and then everything is contained in a bowl or ready to go. Finally, I want to give you a quick tip for sesame seeds. People like to sprinkle sesame seeds on all sorts of things all the time, but a lot of times you don't really taste them because whole sesame seeds are not that aromatic because the aroma is trapped inside. But if you give them a quick grind in the modern pestle, like literally like this, just so you can hear them break, they still look whole, but suddenly the smell really comes out. FYI. Now let's talk about modern pestling technique. This is going to be quick because it's very simple. There are two main techniques and that is pounding and grinding. Pounding is when we're dealing with moist ingredients such as fresh herbs. So it's a simple up and down motion. But if you're dealing with enough volume, stuff will start to ride up the side. So you also want to be like sliding the pestle down towards the center like this. If you have enough stuff in there, there's quite a bit of stuff in there, it is helpful to have a rubber spatula so you can flip and fold things and redistribute things so that you don't miss a spot. Grinding is a circular motion where you don't lift the pestle, like this. This is great for dry and brittle things like spices or rice when I make toasted rice powder. But before you grind, let's take these coriander seeds for example, what you want to do is break them first with the pounding action because when you've got little balls like this and you start grinding, they're just gonna like roll around under your pestle and then nothing happens. So it helps to first crush until they break and then you have a little more traction before you start grinding. And I find that alternating between pounding and grinding can really help, but don't overthink it. Once you do it, it'll be very intuitive what kind of motion is needed for this particular thing. And when you're hand grinding spices, by the way, you are not trying to go for that powdery fine texture that you get with store-bought commercially ground spices. It is not necessary. Once you get down to like for coriander seeds, something like this where it's just flaky, that is more than enough to use it in your dishes. You're just looking for things to not still be like in pieces that you can chew on anymore. Let's get into some FAQs. Why not just use a blender or a food processor instead? Listen, I own every kind of kitchen appliance you can think of. You name it, I got it. Because sometimes a blender or a food processor is exactly what you need, but they are not without their limitations. Aside from the fact that it is a total pain to bring out one of these and clean them, they require a minimum amount of food in order to work properly. If you don't have enough food in there, the food will just stick to the side, the blade just spins and nothing happens. So these are made for bigger jobs. But when you're looking to do just a few cloves of garlic, some chilies, a handful of nuts, modern pestles do not have a minimum limit. You can grind one peppercorn in your biggest modern pestle if you wanted to and it'll work great. Sometimes, however, you've seen on the show that I prefer to use a coffee grinder for dry things because if I have a lot of dry spices or if I'm doing dry chilies, which are very hard to break down manually, this just speeds it up so much. So there is a time and a place for a coffee grinder. Do I need to season my mortar and pestle before I use it? This question comes up a lot and some people will recommend that you should grind some raw rice in it the first time in order to help clean out, you know, bits of rock that might come off into your food. Let me first say this. When you use a mortar and pestle, you're grinding stone on stone year in, year out. There is inevitably going to be tiny particles of granite that will come off over time. You can tell because an old mortar and pestle will be smoother than when it started out. This is fine because granite is made from minerals that are not toxic, so this is not a problem that you need to worry about in the same way that if you cook food in a cast iron pan, some amount of iron is going to come off into your food and that is totally fine. With that out of the way, 
I have never done anything to my new mortar and pestle aside from just giving it a good wash with dish soap and water. A good quality, well-made mortar and pestle should be already well finished on the inside and it should be smooth, but it will have a natural texture of the stone which will help you grind things, but it will not be like slick and shiny, okay? Now, grinding rice in it one time is probably not going to do much. However, if it's not a good quality set, if it's not well made, the inside might feel too rough and then there might be a reason to do an initial grind of some sort. You could try rice, but I hear people just doing an empty grind with a little bit of water until it feels smoother. However, if you feel that there's gritty bits of stone in your food, even with use, and it just keeps happening over and over again. That means that is a low quality stone, might not even be granite, and you should get a new one. But in either case, there's no need to season it like you would a cast iron pan or a carbon steel wok. We don't want to coat it with any material. We just want bare stone. So then how do I take care of my mortar and pestle? Just wash it with dish soap and water and air dry it with regular dishes. There is nothing special that needs to be done. Growing up in Thailand, I was never taught any kind of like specific way to take care of it because it's so low maintenance. I would not put it in the dishwasher because dishwasher chemicals are quite harsh and it might wear out the stone. Just hand wash it to be safe. Here's the big one. How do I choose the right mortar and pestle for me? So there are a few factors to consider, but the biggest thing is probably size. And in theory, in theory, the bigger, the better, because it's going to be more versatile. It's going to be more stable. It's going to have more power and it doesn't have a minimum limit. As we discussed, if you get a small one, aside from the fact that you can't put too much food in there, the pestle is going to be lighter and it's going to have a harder time with tougher things like lemongrass or, you know, if you wanted to get things really, really fine. The obvious problem here is that the bigger it is, the heavier it is. And if it's a pain to move around, speaking from experience, you will be less likely to use it. So you have to strike a balance somewhere. So this giant one was my first one for a long time. It was the only one that I had, but I got so tired of moving it, especially up and down the sink. On a few occasions, I felt like I was going to throw my back out doing that. So I finally got this one. This is two cup capacity. This is three cup capacity. And this became my go to. And eventually I got even a smaller one because if I'm doing a few cloves of garlic, even this is overkill, right? So in the ideal world, you would have one of every size like I do. But if you only want one, here's my recommendation. One cup capacity is the smallest I would go. Any smaller than this and it starts to become not very useful. But know that this is only going to be able to do light things like garlic, chili, spices, a handful of nuts. However, the good news is that this is very light. It's very easy to move around and you will not think twice about using this. Like you will use this all the time. Going up one step, this is a two cup capacity. This is probably a good all purpose size for most people. It can handle tougher things like lemongrass and ginger. You can put a good amount of food in here, but it is starting to get heavy enough that for a small person like me, who's very delicate, I'm going to think twice before I pick it up, right? As opposed to this one, I don't even think about it at all. If you are a big, strong person, maybe this is a no problem for you. If, however, you want maximum versatility, you often cook for a crowd, so you're often cooking large amounts of food and you want to be able to do like handmade pesto and curry paste from time to time, three cup is what you want. Both of these are three cups. And I will also say that I don't see a reason for you to get any bigger than this from most people. This is as big as you need to go. Bottom line is you want to think about two things. What do you want to use it for? And what is the weight threshold that will not deter you from using it? Because the last thing we want is for this to just become a beautiful doorstop. 
And this brings me to our sponsor today. So the problem of weight is something that Crook set out specifically to solve. How can we make a large capacity mortar and pestle that is lighter and more convenient to use? And so they did that by replacing some of the base with removable cork and also by making the wall thinner. So it is large, but light. The pestle is a full size one, so it's still heavy, which is what you want. But the mortar itself, I can lift with one hand, which makes all the difference because I can just reach for it from where I'm standing. Now, because it is lighter, it does wiggle around a little bit more when you pound than an all granite one of the same capacity, but I promise you will use this one way more just because it's so much easier to move around. The only time I use the big guy now is if I wanna do curry paste from scratch by hand. Not that you can't do it in here, but it's just more stable in a big one. I don't do that much anymore these days, so this guy doesn't really get a ton of field time. Croc also uses high quality granite, which means it's denser and more durable. Poor quality granite will, is more porous and will wear out more over time. And some of them will even break. Yes, that does happen. But a good one will last you a lifetime. The cork also has a bonus benefit of dampening pounding noises and protects your countertop. If you're using an all granite one, you definitely want to put a cloth or something under it so that it doesn't scratch your counter. These are all individually handmade by Thai craftspeople and Krok is a small company run by great people based in Thailand. I'm happy to be able to help them spread the word and with the holiday season coming up, it makes a great gift for your foodie friends or yourself. And if you use the link in the description below and use the code PILIN10, you can get $10 off your purchase. So the choice of material is of course another thing to think about. Obviously, I am partial towards granite simply because it is the strongest for its size. Like if you have this made out of wood of this size, it's not gonna do much, right? However, you might have also seen this guy on my channel. Now, this is made from clay and the pestle is made from wood. You can also find the mortar of this shape also made from wood. This is what I call a light duty mortar and pestle. Sometimes in Thailand, we call this a Lao style mortar and pestle, and they're made specifically for pounded salads, like green papaya salad. The aromatics are pounded first, and then the vegetables, everything is added into here. That's why it's gotta be big, because it's basically a salad bowl, and the pestle is light, because you don't want to annihilate all your vegetables. It's just like a light pound and tossing action. If you wanna get this in addition to a stone one, welcome to the club. But I would not have this as your only one because it is too light for a lot of things. Unless of course you wanna make pounded salads all the time, in which case, yes, have one of these. But if you have one, hot tip, you can also make mashed potatoes in here. But in general, if it's marble or wood, anything that's pretty and Instagram-y, generally too light to be useful. And that is it. I hope that answered all of your questions. If I miss anything, leave your questions in the comments below. But if you want to ask them to me directly, if you want to be able to chat with me on Discord, join our Patreon and that's going to be one of the perks that you get. And speaking of Patreon, a special thanks to all of our Patreon members who help support the show directly. If you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description below. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time. Sawadee ka!